Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be on Bluetooth modules and how to hook one up in your circuit. Uh, it's not as difficult as many people might think, um, but I just have some a few things that I want to go over first. First thing I want to go over is uh, Bluetooth module itself. Okay, so this one is a, an HC08 or an HM10 model. Um, both are pretty much identical. However, the important thing is that they are modules that support Bluetooth Low Energy, or BLE. Uh, why that is important is specifically for me, uh, I have an iPhone, and iPhone will only communicate with a BLE supporting module. So that is the HC08, the HM10, um, and also there are some newer versions uh, that support Bluetooth 5, these are Bluetooth 4. Um, the newer versions will also work with iPhone, as long as it's BLE. It should work with an iPhone. Uh, Android will be able to hook up to other versions. The HC05 and 06 are two other modules that are pretty much identical, but those ones do not support BLE, so they will not be able to be connected to your iPhone. Also, just a note on when you connect to your iPhone, this doesn't mean that you'll be able to find it in the Bluetooth menu when you look for discoverable devices. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail, but basically there's two different modes your Bluetooth module can be in, and the mode that your development module is usually in is one that is not detectable by the uh, discovery mode. So what you'd need to do is get an app, and I will go over that later in the video. All right, so now moving on to the wiring or the hookup. So looking at the pinouts here, I'm not using the first and the last pin, uh, which are state and enable. I'm just using the middle four, uh, which are receive, transmit, ground, and VCC. You can see written here, it says VCC is 3.6 to 6 volts. So I have a 5 volt uh, wire attached to that, from, coming from my Arduino Nano board. Uh, then ground is obviously just hooked up to ground. Um, receive and transmit are a little tricky. So when you hook up receive and transmit, you need to make sure the two modules are hooking up to the opposite ends. So transmit on the Arduino needs to hook up to the receive on the uh, Bluetooth module and vice versa. So the transmit on the Bluetooth goes into the receive on the Arduino. A good way to think about this is to think about the way you would talk to somebody. So you wouldn't talk to somebody's mouth in order to have them hear you, you would speak into their ear. So their ear is the receiver, your mouth is the transmitter, you need to communicate with their receiver in order for them to hear you. So same thing here. The Bluetooth needs to talk to the receiver on the Arduino module, which is the receive and the transmit here. All right, and then the last thing I have here is my receive cannot be hooked up directly from my Arduino because the Arduino Nano uses a five volt signal. Um, and the module, although it doesn't say it here and it probably should, only supports a 3.3 volt signal. So sometimes you can get these, um, so this green part is the actual Bluetooth module. The blue part is a carrier board which basically creates uh, pinouts for this module to be able to plug into, be able to be plugged into the breadboard. And sometimes you can get these carrier boards that support 3.3 or 5 volt signals, but it might be safer just to always assume that it can only be 3.3 because 3.3 is safe with 3.3 or a 5 volt signal. Um, however, a 5 volt signal into a 3.3 volt pin will damage the pin. Um, it may not be immediate, but eventually you will damage the pin and the module will be, will be no good anymore. So what I've done here is I have a simple voltage divider. And what this does is because I have uh, two resistors, one is uh, 2K, one is 1K, that's going to break down my voltage from 5 volts down to 3.3. So basically this voltage divider is changing my 5 volt signal down to a 3.3 volt signal so that my Bluetooth module can receive it. Uh, some alternatives there are to use something like this which is a TTL logic converter. And it's just basically four transistors um, and you'd hook up the five volt signal on one side, 3.3 volt signal on, 3.3 uh, volt signal would come out of the other side. These modules are good for circuits when you have a lot of transistor to transistor logic level conversions that you need to make. Um, but since we're only doing one logic level conversion here, it, it, it's easier just to use a simple voltage divider. Um, Another alternative is you could just use a single transistor, um, but a lot of times you don't have those on hand. Resistors are a lot easier to find. So again, in this case, the easiest thing to do would be to use a voltage divider. 
All right, so next let's move on to the code. All right, so now moving on to the code. Uh, first thing we want to do is make sure that our serial is set up. So serial.begin, as we would normally do with a regular serial monitor. Now, a uh, quick note on the 9600. This is your baud rate. It's the speed at which you're transferring your data across the serial line. Um, the default baud rate for most Bluetooth modules is going to be 9600. Uh, it might be different for yours. So just make sure when you when you try this out, if it's not working, try a different baud rate. Um, and I'll go through, I'll show you a quick way to figure out the different baud rates that you can use uh, if that's something you need. Okay, so first I want to do that. And I'm just going to do a simple program, uh, which basically just looks for input coming in from the Bluetooth module, or any serial input for that matter. Um, and it's going to you know, perform some sort of function based on that. So usually the way I do this is I create a function called check inputs. Oops. All right, so let's define that function down here. All right, and the first thing we need to do is we need to see if there's data coming in on the serial line. And what you do for that is, and you can you can look out look at an example on the Arduino examples uh, under communication and it will show you how to do this. But basically we say if serial.read, and there's a couple different ways to read. You can do read, you can do read string. Um, so look those up if you're interested in seeing what they are. Or actually, sorry, this is uh, getting ahead of myself here. If serial is available, and what that's going to do is it's going to check the serial line and see if there are a number of bytes available. It will actually return the number of bytes that are available but since we don't really care how many bytes are available, we're just going to check to see if there are. Um, we're just going to use whatever it returns. So if it's a zero, it'll skip over this if statement. If it's anything but a zero, it will enter this if statement. So if there is something there to be read, then uh, let's read the input. And we'll store that in a character because we're just looking at um, a character at a time. So. Uh, serial.read, and this is where read comes in. So again, there are a couple different ways to do this. You can do it into a string, in which case this would be a string. I'm doing a character just because um, I'm going to end up using a switch statement. And I typically just use a single character to transfer anyway, because that gives you 26 different options to uh, trigger different functions. Okay, so now whatever character we read is in the value. And then I will do something like uh, handle the input from the serial monitor. Okay, so we'll switch. And this is basically just a fancy if statement for most intents and purposes. And when the case is that it's, uh, let's say, a G, I usually use G for something like go, like when I'm doing my uh, robots. If I want to tell my robot to start moving, I'll use a G, uh, maybe an S to say stop moving. So if it's a G, uh, I'm not actually going to do any code for this other than just to say that I'm going to execute some sort of function. So I'll do a print line and say, uh, I don't know, we'll just say go. Okay, so theoretically, in this section here, I would actually call the go function, which would then, I don't know, probably trigger a Boolean statement that would say, should the motors turn on and should the robot be moving? Okay, and every switch case should have a break unless you intend to go on to the next case without breaking. Um, but in most cases, that's not what you want to do. So let's also do an S. So this would be if I want to stop. And we'll say stop. And then there's the default case, which is basically like an else statement. So you have if it's G, else if it's S, else. Okay, if you were doing an else, an if else statement, that's what it would look like. And I forgot my break. This is one of the reasons why I try to tell people to avoid switch statements if they don't need them. Uh, because if you forget that break, it's going to continue your code. And it's not going to stop. Um, and also, Arduino doesn't like to auto format. So I hit Command T or Control T on Windows and it will auto-format this for me. 
So if there's nothing else, I want to be able to tell that I actually read something in. So in this case, what I will do is serial print, um, I usually say unhandled input. Um, and then print line, and then I print uh, what the actual input was. So in this case, we print value. And then break again. That one's kind of unnecessary since there's nothing after it, but we'll leave it the way it is. So this code is pretty much all you need. And again, these would normally call actual functions like stop, and that which would stop the motors, and go, which would allow the motors to be enabled again. Um, but this is just to show you how to program the Bluetooth module. So let me make sure my board is selected, Arduino Nano. Um, a little note, if you run into a problem where you try to upload to an, uh, an Arduino Nano and you get an STK500 error, there is a possibility it could be the old bootloader if you have an older board. Um, I think it was about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, they changed the bootloader. So the new bootloader doesn't work with the older bootloader boards. So just make sure you check that. Try try bouncing through these two different uh, bootloaders. Um, and it's like my... Oh, I'm not plugged in. So that's... Let's plug this in. And this first example, I'm just going to go through with the serial monitor because I want to take out any possible chances of an error. And, you know, if there's something wrong with my Bluetooth module, it may not work. Uh, this at least eliminates the fact that my Bluetooth module might not work. So if I can verify that this works with just a serial monitor, then I can do that and avoid an issue with my Bluetooth module. So I'll just BT example. All right, I'm getting a... Oh, okay, this actually... Good point. Uh, I forgot to bring this up. If you are programming on an Arduino, an Arduino only has one serial, one hardware serial um, set of pins. And since the USB is trying to communicate on those two pins and I have a Bluetooth module plugged in, it's messing with the communication. So when you upload to an Arduino board, if you're using the same transmit and receive pins, pins zero and one, you need to unplug your Bluetooth module in order for it to work. Okay, so now we're done. Now it's uploaded. Um, I'm going to use the serial monitor for this. So because I'm using the serial monitor, I don't want to have my Bluetooth module plugged in. Um, because again, if you have something connected to those same two pins zero and one, then it can mess up with your, or mess up your communication. So if I send H, then it tells me unhandled input. So my code is working. If I do G, go. S, stop. Now, it is case sensitive. So I guess uh, technically that means you get 52, not 26 options. Uh, but that would get confusing if you had a lowercase g versus an uppercase g. Um, you could also add in the case that it is a uppercase, an uppercase g or a lowercase g over here. Um, but I won't get into that. So what I was mentioning before about the baud rate, if you're having trouble figuring out what baud rate your Bluetooth module is at, then you can try just looking through these, these uh, numbers here. So usually it starts at 9600. There are lower numbers, but the standard is usually 9600 as a default. Um, there's some middle numbers in here. Maybe I've seen 56, 57600 fairly often and 115200 fairly often. Um, nothing really above that. So just try out these numbers between 9600 and 115200 uh, if you're not sure what the baud rate on your Bluetooth module is. It should be 9600, but there is a possibility it's not. So you can use that as a kind of a cheat. Um, also, I wanted to point out that if you have this new line selected or anything other than that, you know, new line carriage return or new line and carriage return, then when you type something in, oh, let me just use a good example here. So it says go. So it got the G, but then it says unhandled input and there's nothing there. So what's happening here is serial read is reading one character. It's handling that character and then it's 
flipping through again, there's still one more character available because I'm sending this new line character, which you can't actually visually see on the computer, but it's there. So that's why you see it says unhandled input and then there's this new line because it actually executed the new line by showing you the new line. Um, I know that sounds kind of confusing, but that's what it's doing. So with that, just make sure you have no line ending or know that you're always going to get that one extra or possibly two extra if you're using line and new line and carriage return. You're going to get two unhailed inputs after you send your character. So now another thing you can take from that is that I can actually execute two commands by doing GS because it's going to come through, grab the G, it's going to handle the G, and then it's going to come through and grab the S and handle the S. So if you wanted to execute a couple different functions, you could do something like that. So now it says go stop or go stop, go stop. So it's pretty nice. Um, but now, okay, so I've verified that my code is working with the serial monitor. So now when I add my Bluetooth module, if it doesn't work, I know it's going to be an issue with my Bluetooth module and not my code itself. So what I'm going to do is plug my Bluetooth module in right now. And I'm not going to bring up the video for this just because you don't need to see my Bluetooth module just flashing. But what I will do is I will bring up my phone and I will show you how I have it set up on my iPhone. Setting this up on the Arduino is probably going to be very similar. Um, I'm not sure what the what the apps are called and I'm sure there's plenty more apps for iPhone as well. So just, you know, fiddle through and, and find the one that you like. Uh, this one I actually believe I paid for uh, because I like the, the added features that they had on here. All right, so this is what it looks like. It says it's a, called Serial. And when I open this up, it's it's got a whole bunch of Bluetooth modules here. Most of these I'm not gonna be able to connect to because they're actually commercial grade Bluetooth things. Um, the second one here on this list, and it's probably gonna bounce around, but the second one's labeled Example. That's actually my Bluetooth module. And if you don't know the ID of your Bluetooth module, I will have another video on how to set up the ID and change the name. Um, I called this one Example. But another way is um, in the settings of this app, there's a show only HM10s, which is kind of handy. And that's the only one that's going to show up because it's the only HM10 near me. So I just click this and it connected. So now it shows me the console and I can try typing in here. Let me send an uppercase G. And it shows in blue that I sent a G and it's showing the response as go. So it looks like it's working. And if I send a G and an S, sent a GS and then it received a go and a stop. So the code is working. Um, one of the things I liked about this app specifically is that it has these functions. And so what you can do is you can create these buttons that send commands. So I have a go button, which sends a G. Um, and then I have a uh, drive straight, I believe is what sends an S. And if you're not sure, you can always go into edit I can look at drive straight. It sends, oh, no, it sends a UTF-8D. And they can just be any arbitrary letter. It doesn't have to be anything. So uh, if I look at go, it's showing the message is a G. And then pause, it's showing in hex. So let me change this to UTF. That's a Q. So I'm not sure what my uh, S button is. But if I push go, um, you can't see it, but my phone vibrated. And if I go here, it shows that I hit go. And if I hit go one, two, three, four times, you can see there's four G's that were sent. So this is not kind of nice because you don't have to memorize that G means go and S means stop. You just tie it to that and, and make your code match what you have in your functions list. And now if I hit like drive straight, it shows me unhandled input D. So if I wanted to use that button, I could just say, oh, I just need to add a case for D and tell it to drive straight. But that's really all I have to talk about as far as the Bluetooth module goes. Um, I don't want to make this any longer than it has to be. Um, again, I will have another video that explains the details of setting up your Bluetooth module, changing the name, maybe changing the baud rate, or even finding out what the baud rate is. Uh, so stay tuned for that video. Let me know in the comments if you, if you think I missed something, um, if you liked the video, if you want to see more, just let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.